Hi, my name is Steve Faulkner. Welcome to Real Magic Review. Today I'm going to be reviewing Homer Leewag's Masterclass. Before we do this, it's very important that you go and have a look after this um, at onlinemagic.co. Don't look at it now, look at it afterwards. That's my online magic course resource, program, over 700 videos, live sessions every week, uh, special guest lecturers and all that, all for $9.99 a month. Have a look at it. It's all me. I do it on my own. It's, uh, it's a labour of love is what it is. Uh, over 10 years of me making this thing. So have a look at it and uh, read the reviews and all that. Right. Oh, and like and subscribe if you haven't done that already. If you like it and you want to subscribe to it. Hi, I'm Homer Leeway. I've been a little busy for the last 28 years. But before all that, I was a magician. These are my favorite routines. Coin one, coin two. All those little details make it so much fun to perform. Timing, attitude, those are some of the small things that can make a huge difference, even if you're a beginner. I suck at palming. That's why coin one even exists. This uh, is all very exciting, isn't it? If you're like me, I, was excited as, as a bit like this at the Chris Kenner. Blimey, I can't get my words out. Chris Kenner, master class. Watch that. Chris Kenner and Homer Lee Wag were very important influences to me because when I started learning magic properly, like really getting into it, I was learning loads from different DVDs and books. I was, I was a little bit, I, I found some of the learning experiences quite dry. There was something lacking in them. It didn't mean I didn't learn from him, but the actual experience of sitting down there and doing it had a, had a kind of, there was something, there's something not there, a kind of, I wasn't connected to the material or the people teaching it a lot of the time until I came across certain books and DVDs. There was more than just Chris Kenner and Homer Leewag, but I remember reading Totally Out of Control and finding it fun and humorous, but the material was really good. It wasn't, it was style and substance and with an eye on what really worked and skill, you know, it wasn't shying away from sleight of hand. It was all really kind of what I needed. And when Coin One came along, it, it had that kind of thing that made me really want to sit down and learn. And it wasn't just the material. The material's brilliant and the move is brilliant and the moves are brilliant and the routine is brilliant, I should say. But the, there's something about the way it's put together, the style of it and the... the it's, it's a little bit like my, my daughter's just got a MacBook Air, right? And we were thinking, she doesn't really need one. She doesn't, she doesn't need it. She doesn't really do editing or anything like that. She, she's only right. But since she's got it, she's done so much more study and got really more productive because it's something nice to sit in front of. And someone once said to me, and it's Pete Wardell, said, when you've got something like that, it's, it's nicer to sit in front of and it kind of motivates you more. And that experience is so much uh, m more rich, richer, richer. And of course, on the flip side of that, you can get lost in style. You can get lost in that. And it, it kind of is a, is a cover for a lack of something else. But again, when I sat in front of Coin One uh, many years ago, and, uh, you know, a similar thing with a lot of Dan and Dave stuff, I liked that experience. It's, it's kind of spoke to me and I like the, the effort that was put into it. So when Chris did his masterclass, that was a, a big thing for me and it was great and the learning of everything I loved it and then Homer's one Chris kind of said it as a joke in his uh master class that Homer should just do one on cooking which I, I actually think would be great and when this started I was like maybe he's done that because there was this brilliant routine that he does with coins but he does it with with bits of salami and it it's it's great and what it shows is that there's more to this than style and learning and what I mean by that which is so important is that there is humour and a human connection to it. Now, if you've seen any of the trailers, if you haven't watched this yet, it's got this very kind of design. It's been designed within the inch of its life, this thing. And you can see that by the way he, he shows his storyboards, shows his notebooks within the masterclass, which I think is very deliberate and very important. He shows his, his notebooks uh, for the exact reason I don't show mine. They are beautiful. Everything just looks neat. By the way he kind of has the stuff piled on the side of the table, it's kind of the opposite of me and it's something I deeply uh, am deeply envious of. But you'll see, and there's a kind of, there's a clinicalness 
to it as well. It's very, it's got this kind of blue color cast, which it, it's, it's all kind of, you know, again, the part of the design. It's got this consistency throughout it, which is the Atats for me. He's got the picture of the Atat there. He's got Atat on his T-shirt. He's got one there or AT, AT, depending on what way you want to go with that from Star Wars, which gives this kind of weird perspective design, which again, I'm sure is deliberate, but it, it, it adds something there for me. And the way the cameras are, there's these, you know, if you've seen any of the social media, there's all the, the thought of, of, of the camera setup and the angles and all that stuff. It's just such a part of this. But again, it could, with all that stuff, come across as a little bit pleased with itself. And I find that a lot in magic. Sometimes when you see magic that's really beautifully, beautifully designed, it can take itself a bit too seriously and again, can kind of alienate me a little bit from, from what we're actually doing, which, you know, let's not forget what we're doing here is learning. But what we're also doing is having fun. And that, to me, is the bit that holds this whole thing together that stops it kind of being an exercise in design and beauty, really. And learning is the fact that you, in the middle of this is Homer Lee Wag teaching us magic. And when he starts doing that, you know you're in the right place and it all just comes together beautifully. There's an element of fun throughout this whole thing and which I think is so deliberate. The fact that just as it's starting to get serious, there's a really funny joke in it and a genuinely funny joke. I don't mean a magician joke that's kind of has, has a kind of, I don't know, a funny idea at the kind of genesis of it many years ago that doesn't come across. This is genuinely funny. There were some laugh out loud moment, laugh out loud moments in this. And again, that show the level of design. So at the beginning, he, there's a kind of almost like a throwaway joke about, you know, when it gets a bit boring, there'll be a doggy cam and the camera is on these beautiful dogs. Uh, and you're like, oh, that's great. But there isn't one moment when that camera goes onto those dogs that isn't really funny, that, is, that has been thought about or, or maybe improvised in the edit. But it's just every time there's a, sl a slightly cheesy joke or a slightly line that doesn't quite work there's a self-awareness to that where the camera goes onto the dog and you've got this bored looking dog and that's one shot of the dog says so much you know there's a character in that dog you, you, you know you know you kind of know what he's thinking it's just great so it's enjoyable the design is beautiful it is an amazing learning experience and i'll go into the routines in a minute this is week one by the way i'm not going to review every single one because i'm pretty sure it's not going to be great week one and then full of filler the rest two weeks i'm pretty sure that's not going to happen but the teaching is again where it comes into its own now i learned coin one many years ago which is the last half of this really oh, i thought yeah i know that you know i'm not great at it but i know it but the he wanted to add more to this. It wasn't just a reteaching of this routine. And that's where we again look at the camera angles where every single one is used properly. There's none of this kind of, you know, I get sometimes with multiple cameras, there's these cameras going all over the place when someone's talking. You go, why have they changed the camera there? And I get it, it needs to be a bit dynamic and there are camera changes for the sake of it sometimes, but it just gets one change after another. And one's in black and white and one's from the side. And it's like, look, just, you know, it's, it's kind of moving around a bit too much. And again, that could have happened if it was in the hands of somebody that didn't know what they were doing. You've got Cat behind the camera, which clearly, clearly knows what she's doing. Homer has designed the whole thing. And it's kind of like a mind reading. And I talk awful, awful, an awful lot about this kind of empathy of being a teacher, teaching something and having empathy with the student. And what I mean by that is at just at the time when I'm learning something, I'm going, oh, I could do with another angle at that. And then the angle comes in every single time. There wasn't one moment where I kind of went, I can't quite, it was in there. And again, that's that difference between someone who's a magician that's teaching something or someone who's a magician and a teacher. So the, the thing is pretty much flawless, but is the material flawless? I, I can't see anything wrong with it. So the first routine is this, flash rice routine that he kind of does first of all with a salami thing and then does with coins and the first time i saw it and i've you know i've looked at it's, it's based on david roth chinka chink shadow coins i've seen a few versions of that and this one just got, just really got me I and mean, i've never seen it or I'd seen it a long time ago maybe i don't know uh, i'm not a total expert on on those routines but i, I just thought where did that come from it's a really lovely quick beautiful routine and i learned it 
and there's nothing in it really that's that difficult. It takes practice, it takes rehearsal, it takes a certain situation. You need a mat, you need angles, are, well, not that much of a problem, but uh, you're going to have to think about that. You need to be at a table, all that. Yes, it's not a routine for doing it every, at every gig, but really, really, really lovely. And I enjoyed every second of learning that. Importantly, what he gives you, again, looking at that empathy to the learner, is he will give you a gimmickless version of this. So there are gimmicks in this, and some of you look at that and go, oh, they're really expensive, but you, there's gimmickless versions of this. And I will, with the exception of coin one, maybe a bit, but with this one, I don't think the gimmickless version is any worse. It's not like a, you're not making that concession. It's gonna be a bit trickier, but it's not mind-blowingly trickier. And it looks the same. And as he said, it's got to look the same and it does look the same. It's not like here's the rubbish version you do if you can't be bothered to buy the thing. You're just going to have to choose what works for you. And incidentally, I think buying the thing that you're going to need for this is well worth it, even if this was the only masterclass, because it goes into use of that uh, in detail and gives you lots of finesse on how to use that. And I'm, again, I'm not an expert at that and I found that really, really useful. So there's first routine, great, brilliant. Second is this pharaoh, oh, what's it called? The Filipino false pharaoh, or better known as FFF, or which is a false shuffle in the hands based on a pharaoh shuffle, but you don't have to know a perfect pharaoh to be able to do it. Incidentally, he does teach a kind of very quick uh, pharaoh at the end of it, how to do a pharaoh, but you, it doesn't have to be perfect, but you're gonna have to kind of learn that and it's not that hard if you're not, if you're not having to get it perfect every time. It's a lovely full shuffle. Uh, easy to do, I thought. If you've got that pharaoh, sounds great. Great fun to practice. And there's a triumph at the end of it, which based on Richard Kaufman idea, I believe, which gives you a use for that shuffle. I really liked it. I loved doing it. For me, it was the one thing, obviously, that was a little bit out of place because it's the card move and the rest are two solid routines. But I think for card people, it, it kind of ticks that box nicely and it kind of follows the thinking of, of Homer, which is it's got to be practical, it's got to work, and, uh, and it's got to look good. And it really, really does. And it's way easier than a lot of false deck shuffles. It does cut the deck, but it keeps it in order. Then we've got coin one. Now, I again thought, I've got this, and he says, and, and I thought, you know, when I saw this, I thought, it's perfect, it's great, you know, it, it, I don't know anything else, but it isn't perfect because he doesn't talk in it, and it, the whole thing's shot beautifully, but when it comes to subtleties, and even though there are subtleties in it, it is quite nice to be, to have someone in front of you doing it in real time, making the odd mistake, dropping the coins, going, oh, that happens when that happens, you know, like, with, you know, my hands are a bit hot, which is a real problem with one of these moves, or can be for me, and what happens uh, when your hands are a bit hot? How can you how can you sort of make sure that at this pivotal moment things aren't going to go wrong? And again, you're only going to. I don't like giving away all the names of the moves and stuff. I don't know why, but it's yeah, that bit might not make sense until you've seen it. But you know, you should watch it anyway. When I learned it, I wasn't quite ready for it. I had a, a half dollar set. I didn't have a dollar set. I think it's kind of easier with a dollar set, but he says it's less angry with the half dollar set. Um, but it, I didn't feel like I was quite ready for it and those moves weren't quite there, but over, quite there. But over the years, I've kind of played with bits of it. I've kind of forgotten a lot of the routine, which I haven't now because I've been back to it. Uh, so it was a lot easier now and I feel like I'm, it's something I could see myself performing. He does say at the beginning of it, he wants this masterclass to be for everybody, not just to be for move monkeys. But I do think this, if you're a complete beginner, you're going to get a lot out of it. So he is right, but you're not going to be going straight onto coin one for those reasons. I think the first routine is doable if you're a beginner. I don't think there's any real sleight of hand in it unless you do the gimmickless version. But again, it's probably a step too far if you're picking up a coin for the first time. But saying that, learning and listening to people that are experts will do way more than may way more for you sometimes than learning the moves. It's the why of the moves, the motivation behind each action, which is really important, which you get a lot here. So he goes through the moves of it, which is really important, two moves in this, um, and he goes through them first, so you can not stop it there and work on them before you go any further. And then he goes through the routine brilliantly. I absolutely loved it. Make sure, importantly, that you can follow along. He does say, you know, make sure you got the coins, make sure you got the cards. There's something weird about teaching magic to people, I find, when they haven't got the coins and the cards out. You kind of go, you don't remember all this. So he kind of knows that and makes sure that you're going along with it. 
He's got four endings, I think, to coin one. One on the table, excuse me, which is the basic ending, and I think three in the hand. And there is this brilliant, he, almost, he doesn't throw it away, but there's a, there's a Brett Wolf idea in this, which really got me. And he says, fooled him for the first time. And I think that's a real takeaway for me. I'm going to do that without a doubt. It's a way of making that coin move from your hand to the spectator's hand at the end, which just flies. It's absolutely brilliant. But they're all really, really good. And then there is a gimmickless version, which he calls the knuckle-busting version at the end. I don't think it is that knuckle-busting, actually. I don't think it's that much harder. It is harder than the original, but it's got a few more flaws in it. But you can do it pretty much impromptu without the thing you need. This was, this is really, has really lived up to, thankfully, what I wanted from this. The thought, the design, everything happens for a reason. It's not just, isn't this a pretty masterclass, let's make it look prettier than all the other people's. And, you know, I, I do say that it, sometimes design doesn't matter. If someone can sit in front of me and record something on their phone and teach it beautifully, and it can look great. But it does matter, because if you can draw something from that experience and connect to that learning in, in a way that's visual, and it's, it's so hard to describe, but emotionally draws you in, then it is different. You do learn more and when it's from someone who can understand what it's like to learn these things it makes a massive massive difference now i know this is very gushy but it's it's important i think that that you know how much i like this so you can go out and and know that you're going to get something decent you know these master classes they're all good really i haven't seen a terrible one at all but this is something special and uh, which is why i've kind of tried to get this out on the first week so you can watch week two and three and um and four, two, yeah, one of them, all of them. Even if you had this list one, it'd be worth it. And, uh, and make your mind up then. Listen, but there are going to be loads of things I've missed out. Do please comment below, ask questions. I will do a live session this Thursday at five, answering those questions and maybe after that as well on the following Thursday. Um, but any questions do let me know and join us five o'clock on the live session, comments on comments, five UK time uh, here on the channel. Thanks very much Vanish Inc for sending me this. Thanks Homer for making it. And uh, any questions, as I said, like and subscribe, check out onlinemagic.co and you can learn from me as well. Take care, have a good one. Cheers.